Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Rando Rob. It is early Monday morning. It's about 6 a.m. It is freezing cold. It is not quite uh, literally freezing in the building, but it's very close. It's freezing outside. Uh, I believe it's uh, 31 degrees outside and inside the building. It is 35, so not technically freezing, but pretty close. <laughs> close enough if you're filming a video. So um, I hope everybody has been having uh, a good week, a good January. Our January has been uh, relatively awful. <laughs> We've had a lot of stuff going on and hitting the family all at one time, which included uh, the passing yesterday of our beloved cat, Noodle. Uh, we are still uh, dealing with that right now in the household. Um, noodle, uh, we had noodle for about four years and, um, uh, three months we got him from uh, the local, uh, pet shelter and, uh, three months after we got him, they said he was about a year old, about three months after we got him, he had some sort of, um, stroke or something. Uh, we took him to the vet. They said they had no idea. Uh, they said for thousands of dollars, they could do exploratory brain surgery and tell us exactly what happened. We said, we'll pass on that. And so uh, for the past four years, we have been taking care of uh, a mostly normal cat with uh, definitely some quirks. Uh, part of the uh, effects of his uh, original stroke or whatever it was, uh, was it affected his equilibrium. So although he was able to walk around and get around, jump up on things, do everything just like a normal cat, um, his head was always tilted <laughs> at a 45 degree angle. And so he went through life uh, with his head tilted like that. So um, it appears that uh, a couple of days ago he had another uh, stroke and this one he did not recover from. So it's been a sad day around, uh, around the house, uh, a sad weekend, but uh, um, you know, we love our pets while they're here and uh, um, we enjoy the time that we have. And my wife said that uh, the the, I'm paraphrasing here, I'm probably screwing it up, but she said the, uh, the price of love is grief. And so that's uh, uh, something that, that we think about is, uh, you know, uh, obviously everything comes to an end, all living things come to an end. Uh, so uh, anyway, we enjoyed our time with Noodle. You may have heard Noodle on some of my podcasts in the background. Uh, he, some cats purr and occasionally he purred and some cats meow and sometimes he meowed, but more often than not, Noodle wailed. Um, <laughs> he, and he started about five in the morning and he would go all through the house to every room and just meow at the top of his lungs and make sure everybody was awake. Uh, and uh, so he would announce his <laughs> presence uh, in that way. So we're definitely gonna, definitely gonna miss that and miss all the uh, things that Noodle brought to the family. So anyway, uh, enough about uh, talking about Noodle. Uh, on uh, Randall Rob, as you know, this is the show where I uh, show off things, uh, parts of my collection. I'm out here in the workshop this morning and uh, I don't know how much of the workshop you can kind of see behind me. Uh, this isn't really a collection area. The collection area is more over there and over there and it's everywhere in my life. But um, uh, <clears throat> a lot of times on this show I say, hey, this is the newest uh, thing in my collection. Like this is something I got over the weekend and I'm showing it to you now. Um, but this is the newest and absolute newest thing uh, I've ever had on Randall Rob because we're gonna open it right now. This is one of those cool opening videos uh, that the kids do, an unboxing video, uh, if you will. Now, uh, I saw, actually, uh, let me tell you what these are. These are the brand new Dungeons and Dragons action figures based on the 80s cartoon. So uh, before we open these, I'm gonna talk for two minutes and get you up to speed on Dungeons and Dragons. Now I have done a podcast episode of You Don't Know Flack about Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, it was episode number two. So if you um, were listening to You Don't Know Flack from the very beginning, you heard me talk about Dungeons and Dragons. If you haven't, you might wanna go back and listen to You Don't Know Flack episode two. It's actually numbered 102. Um, but that was the second episode I ever did, and that was about my history with Dungeons and Dragons. So the 90 second version, for those of you that haven't heard that episode, let's get you up to speed. Uh, in third grade, I believe, um, I, I 
encountered Dungeons and Dragons. I asked my parents about it. I said, hey, I'm interested in this, but I'm afraid that it might be evil or satanic or something. And my parents said, well, let's find out. So they bought <laughs> the basic set, the classic red basic D&D uh, &D set and brought it home and we all played Dungeons and Dragons. My, my parents and me and, and my sister, and I think we all played together once, maybe twice, but I think just once. And the gist of it was, my parents were kind of feeling out and to see, you know, is this evil, demonic, you know, satanic? And uh, they were clearly uh, convinced that it was not. And they said, knock yourself out, not for us, great for you to play. That's how I got started playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I played the, um, I had the basic set, then I bought the expert rules, then I bought, I think there was the companion set maybe, and then there was the master set. So those were all the, the um, basic rule sets. But I had a next door neighbor that was, uh, uh, it was my next door neighbor who was basically the same age as I am, but his older brother was into Dungeons and Dragons. And they were into AD and D. So they played advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And once I found that, I started buying all the hardback manuals. I still have all my old hardback manuals. Maybe I'll show some of those things off in future episodes of Rando Rob, but um, I just really got into D and D. Now I've always been um, one of those jack of all trades is not quite the right word, but um, I was I was in a million things, so I wasn't just a D&D &D kid. I mean, I was into skateboarding and breakdancing and music and, and movies and all these things. So D&D &D was just one little part of my life, you know. Uh, but I did own some of the original AD&D &D or Dungeons & Dragons action figures. I had some of the miniatures. And then when the cartoon came on television, I thought that was the greatest thing ever in my whole life. <laughs> I loved the Dungeons & Dragons Saturday morning cartoon. I watched every episode. Um, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And um, I was always disappointed, like a lot of kids, that they didn't make action figures or toys based on the cartoon show. Now there were Dungeons and Dragons action figures, but they weren't based on the cartoon. Now so there were some, like I remember, um, I think his name is Strongheart the Paladin. Uh, he made a cameo in the cartoon, and I think Marduk and, and um, the, the evil sorcerer, and you know, I think they all appeared like maybe in one episode of the cartoon, but they weren't normal characters. So it was a little bit of a crossover, but it wasn't, you know. Uh, the characters, the, the Paladin and Uni and, and Barbarian and all those characters that we watched on the cartoon, it wasn't those, those toys. I never, ever understood that. Um, you know, there were lots of cartoons that were less popular than Dungeons and Dragons that got cartoon or got um, action figure lines and toy lines. So the, the fact that they never did that, I just never really understood that. Um, now they did release a line of figures. Now they're not action figures. They were not movable, posable, but they were um, like little statuettes almost of the characters from the cartoon. They were not released in the United States or in the UK or anywhere. They were released, I believe in, I want to say Portugal. I could be wrong, but I think it was Portugal. If, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments as they say. <laughs> um, but, uh, so they, they made, a, uh, and it was one, you know, one to one, like there's one figure of Hank, one of, uh, you know, magician. Uh, so it was one of each one of those. And you, I never heard about them as a kid. I never heard about them. I only heard about them through eBay when I was looking for Dungeons and Dragons things to collect. Those figures sometimes, especially the more popular ones like, um, Vinger, you know, the, the main bad guy from the show, uh, those go for hundreds, around $100, maybe give or take a little bit more, a little bit less, but around $100 per figure. So if you wanted all the figures, I mean, you're looking at $1,000, uh, which is crazy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that uh, <laughs> big of a fan. I like Dungeons and Dragons, not $1,000 worth for some little figures. So, so I've never had uh, those figures. Now, uh, just to wrap this up, when eBay came out, uh, I began looking for Dungeons and Dragons things and I found VHS tape, bootleg VHS tapes of the cartoon series. <laughs> and I purchased those. So I had, uh, long before they were released on uh, DVD, I had bootleg VHS copies of the D&D &D, 
uh, cartoons. So I would watch those. My friends would come over there like, where did you get those? I'm like, it's this brand new site called eBay. You can buy anything. And so I had that. Then when the box or the DVD box set came out, I bought that. So I, I own the, the DVDs. Um, I was super excited uh, a few years ago. There was a car commercial that I think was from uh, Spain. And uh, it was definitely the, the language I think was, I don't know. I, I, mean, I think it was Portuguese. Again, I have to look that up. But it was a car commercial that featured actors portraying the people from the original d d cartoon, which was so exciting. And in fact, we talked about, uh, we did an episode about Dungeons and Dragons on another podcast that I'm on, which is Throwback Reviews. So you don't know, Flack has uh, an episode about Dungeons and Dragons, Throwback Reviews has an episode about Dungeons and Dragons. So, um, so I've been a fan, you know, my whole life. Uh, I haven't played in uh, decades probably. Uh, it's been a really, really long time. Uh, you know, I've played some of the computer games and stuff, but I just don't have the time to invest in, in getting together with people and doing stuff for eight hours, uh, taking up a weekend. I just, I don't have the time. I loved it. But anyway, bringing us up to date, uh, a few months ago, someone, and by someone, I mean everybody who knows me that saw this ad said, did you know they're about to release Dungeons and Dragons action figures? Um, so that's one of the, I don't want to say it's irritating because it makes it sound like, I don't know. It's just one of those things like when you, when you like Star Wars and when people know you like Star Wars, there'll be a Star Wars meme and then a thousand people will, will tag you or send it to you like, Hey, did you see this? And you're like, yeah, I saw it 500 times. <laughs> but it's it's hard to be irritated because you know they're doing it because they know you like Star Wars and, and they think they're doing something nice. So I'm I'm always polite when that when that I get them over and over and over, you know, but um but that does that is a thing that happens. That probably happens to you. Something that you like people will forward to you or tag you and you'll see it multiple times. Uh, so a lot of people sent me and I'm grateful because I, I it's definitely an announcement I wouldn't want to miss. Uh, but they were releasing new Dungeons and Dragons action figures in 2022, 2023 is when they shipped, uh, based on the original cartoon series. Now that's kind of a weird thing, but it's nostalgia, right? It's this stuff is popular now. The things from the eighties are still popular today. So I know there's a new Dungeons and Dragons movie in the works, uh, that I've heard rumors about, but as far as I know, it's not going to be the original characters from the cartoon. So this is a little bit weird uh, that they would release action figures based on a 40-year-old cartoon series. But then again, uh, there, there are companies like Reaction and some of those others that are releasing brand new action figures uh, based on you know retro uh, uh, licenses and things like that. So it's not that weird. Now, the Dungeons & Dragons action figures were an exclusive to Target. And so you could go into Target and buy them, but you could also buy them online for the same price uh, as a pre-order. And then when they're released, they would ship them to you. Now I've done pre-orders a couple of times and it never fails that when you pay for the pre-order, you get your uh, merchandise after everybody else. <laughs> so it's almost like you're being punished for doing the pre-order. Uh, if you're like a day one kind of guy, and I'm not, I'm not. It doesn't bother me that I didn't get these day one. Um, but uh, I started seeing people post this online. Uh, some uh, The retroist and, and uh, some of my friends uh, in that circle were like, hey, people are, are starting to get there or they've got them. They're on the shelves at Target. And I'm like, well, I can't go get them at Target because I paid for them three months ago. And I haven't even gotten notified that they've shipped yet. So I got mine a week after everybody that actually went to Target went to the store and got them. Uh, but here we are. And here is uh, this box that arrived. It is very light for how large it is. And uh, you can see the Target company logo right here. I also have to be careful because... Um, I'm shooting today's video. This is the first video that I've ever put out like this that I am shooting with my new GoPro. And I have a remote microphone system that I'm using, the DJI remote mic. I have the GoPro. And um, <clears throat> I have learned in the past that uh, these HD cameras are very, very good quality and such good quality that sometimes they pick up things uh, you might not want to pick up, including your home address. <laughs> <laughs> and shipping information that are on labels. So I'm being a little bit cognizant of that. But uh, let's see, my fingers are super cold. And so hopefully I can 
uh, cut through this tape without cutting through uh, my fingers. That would be fantastic and not cut into the actual fingers themselves. But this is the box as it arrived on my doorstep from Target. <clears throat> and uh, I don't remember exactly how many figures I bought. Uh, how many figures I bought is all the figures. <laughs> so I'm not sure how many are in the line, but we're about to find out. <clears throat> right off the bat here, we have uh, some, I would say packing material, but it's really just a piece of plastic that has been thrown in the top that did absolutely nothing, but that's okay. Um, uh, and here we have a thing that says just for you. It's from Target and uh, it has a return information, stuff like that. Not interesting. I was looking to see if it had any additional information or anything like that, but it does not. Uh, and it has information about how I should do more shopping uh, at Target. Uh, so let's get into this. Oh, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. This is uh, my childhood. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set this over here and then I'm gonna take things out and there's a big one right off the bat. Uh, and the other three are smaller, so we'll take the big one out. The big one here, which is a double pack, uh, is Vinger and Dungeon Master. So here is the first one. Now, the first thing I will mention, and this is complete first view for me, complete uh, first time reaction, I guess. I'm not really a reaction video guy, but what I will say is there's no window to see the actual action figure. I'm, I'm looking here at the other ones and uh, the other ones uh, are the same way. They just have pictures of what the action figures look like. So I guess uh, it's not like Star Wars or other uh, figures that would come on a bubble card. If you wanna see what these figures look like, uh, you're gonna have to open them. I guess the one advantage of that might be you could open this, pull the figure out and display it and still maintain the packaging. So I guess that's a thing. Um, Let's see what we've got here on the back. It has uh, uh, some, just some pictures of Avenger. Uh, it says Avenger is 8.2 inches tall or 20.8 centimeters and Dungeon Master is 2.9 inches tall or 7.36 centimeters. Now, if you know your lore from the cartoon, you know a little secret, which is Dungeon Master was Avenger's father, which was really uh, uh, revealed in uh, I believe the last episode. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, that was something. But uh, yeah, Vinger was, um, you know, as a kid, I always thought he looked kind of weird because he has this design where he only had uh, one horn <laughs> on the side of his helmet. So his helmet's lopsided. Um, he kind of looks like he's wearing a, a long uh, party dress uh, with bat wings. So it's, a, it's an oddly designed, uh, uh, character. Now, it almost looks like, I can't tell. Now, I was going to say it almost looks like maybe this uh, would be what it unfolds into some sort of display or something, but I don't think so. Um, also on the back, it shows the other characters that are available, which is Hank, Diana, and Bobby, which you can see right there. And uh, spoiler alert, there are three more figures in this box. Uh, the other thing, oh, uh, it does say at the top, there's a big 40. And so I assume that means 40th uh, anniversary. I believe that's probably what that refers to. Um, but the boxes are not completely square. If you can see this, there is a corner uh, cut out of it where it's sloped over like that, which kind of is reminiscent of, I would say like a 20 sided die. Um, because it's triangular, like a die, um, a multi-sided die, not like a, a even like a six, but you know, like a twenty-sided die or something. So possibly, that's uh, supposed to invoke that feeling, and it just has the and signal from the or a symbol from the Dungeons and Dragons. Also, I should mention that this does come uh, with some die. So each figure comes with a a die. Um, and you can see in the picture here that you've got, uh, uh, it looks like maybe an eight-sided or a 10-sided. I'm not sure. It looks like a 10-sided because I see zero, zero um, die. And then I, probably a, I'm not sure, maybe a 20-sided die. I'm not really sure uh, what dies come with this. But here we go. 
Venger and Dungeon Master, first one, super fun. Looking forward to opening those up. Uh, <coughs> next, I'm just pulling them out in order here. We have Barbarian. This is Diana. No, not Barbarian. Um, Acrobat. Uh, Diana. Diana, every character in the cartoon, when they went to Dungeons & Dragons land, became a specific character, and they got one magic weapon, which Vinger was always trying to get the kids' weapons, and that was the whole point of the show. For 27 episodes, uh, was Vinger, everyone, trying to get the kids' weapons. <laughs> That's all Vinger wanted. Uh, and so uh, here we have Diana, and her uh, magic weapon was this uh, staff that she could use to, to fight with or pole vault over things. It was very handy. Um, and one interesting thing was at the time, uh, the, the cartoon was Dungeons and Dragons. It wasn't advanced Dungeons and Dragons, right? And so when it came out, like Acrobat was not a character class, uh, as far as I knew, you know, in basic and, and expert and all that stuff. Uh, so I was always confused, like, well, what is she supposed to be? Is she a fighter? Is she a cleric? Is she a, a thief? Like, and you knew it wasn't those things because, uh, you, you know, we had other things like that. Um, but a lot of these classes ended up coming up in, um, I think it's called Unearthed Arcana, maybe. That was an expansion uh manual book that came with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons that added a bunch of characters like Paladin and uh, Acrobat, uh, I think was in there, Barbarian was in there. So those were things that you could add to Dungeons and Dragons. And I, I was never sure if that influenced these characters or if these characters influenced what was in those manual. But anyway, we've got Diana here. Um, I would say she, a lot of times she is shown in the cartoon like pole vaulting over things with her, her magic staff. Um, yeah, so this is a fun figure. Again, it comes with a die. Uh, it does have that same sloped feature. It's on the box here this time. And um, it says other figures that are available includes Bobby and Hank. So it does not list Venger and Dungeon Master. But there we go. <clears throat> there is Diana. Next up, and I'm going to do these in a specific order, is Hank. Hank is... Um, the leader, kind of the de facto leader of the party. Um, again, he comes with a, a die, has more advertising for um, Bobby and Diana. <clears throat> but he got the magic bow. So he got this bow that was, all it was was the, um, uh, the bow, but without a string. And then when he would pull it back, the string was magic. And it shot magic arrows. And he never ran out of arrows. So he could just fire arrows. And the arrows did more than just attack people. Like they could sometimes wrap around things like a lasso or do other little crazy things. So, um, yep, Hank was definitely the um, the leader of the group. Um, yeah, this is a cool figure. I'm taking a look here at the picture. I would say that the cards are not perfect. Uh, the card here on this side is bent just a little bit, smashed in. I, that doesn't bother me. <clears throat> but I would say if you're going to buy this because you're a collector and you wanted it to be an absolute mint condition, I don't feel like it's an absolute mint condition. I don't feel like that one sheet of plastic that was thrown in the top uh, did anything to keep this from rattling around and, and hitting the edge. So obviously the, the side of this, I mean, it's, it's almost in percent. You would never see it on a camera, but um, I, I mean, feeling it, you could feel there's a little part that's, that's creased right there. Um, so if you were trying to get one in mint condition... Uh, I, I might go to the store and, and look for one, uh, you know, off the shelf. This one looks like uh, Hank comes with an eight-sided die, I believe. So I wonder if you get a whole set of dice um, once you've purchased, you know, all the figures. <clears throat> I, you know, each one shows the die that it comes with, but it doesn't say, like you would think it would say eight-sided die or something like that, but it doesn't, doesn't seem to have a label. It just has um, the guy. Now, I will tell you that... Um, a lot of these figures have interchangeable pieces. And I know that Hank has an interchangeable hand. He has a hand that's a normal hand and then one that looks like he's drawing back um, the string on the bow. And it actually comes with two bows, uh, one with the magic string pulled back and one with where it's just he's carrying it. And some people online have reported that the hands have broken already. The finger, I think, broke off or something. Um, 
I can tell you that this is probably the most handling these figures will ever have. <laughs> I will open these figures up. I'm gonna put them on my shelf for display. I may keep the boxes. Um, I may eventually toss them. I don't know. I, you know, I, I collected Star Wars black figures for a long time and I kept the boxes and when I moved, I threw all the boxes away. I said, who cares? I just, I just like the figures. Um, so I, I don't know. I may keep the boxes. I may not. It kind of depends on also, like I feel some tape here on the bottom and maybe the boxes can be opened without damaging the package at all. So if that's the case, I might actually keep it. But again, um, they're certainly not like there's a little tiny tear here. Actually, that's where the box comes together and forms. But um, uh, yeah, so I would not say they're, I would say they're 98% quality, 95% quality, but not 100%. So um, again, not, not a deal breaker for me personally, but uh, just something to be aware of. Anyway, here's Hank. All right, and if you noticed a little jump in the video there, it's because uh, I am recording this for the first time with my GoPro 11. I mentioned uh, at the top of the show that I got a GoPro for Christmas. I have purchased uh, a lot of accessories. I've purchased a lot of things. Uh, and I'm learning the system. And the first thing that I've learned is that it goes through batteries really fast. <laughs> and so uh, if you're filming inside the house, maybe I'll just plug it into the wall or I'll recharge the battery before I start. So anyway, uh, the last figure here in the box is uh, a two pack, another two pack. And it's probably, depending on your age group, one of the most loved or one of the most hated combos from the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon series. This is Bobby with his pet unicorn, Uni. People love to hate Uni. Uh, Uni was, uh, I don't believe, ever helpful. I'm trying to think if there was ever a moment uh, in the series in which she uh, saved uh, our, our characters off the top of my head, I'm not thinking of one, there may have been one, but uh, Uni was uh, <clears throat> um, definitely uh, kind of a, a I, I would say the uh, scrappy-doo <laughs> of the series. Uh, and of course we have Bobby, who became a barbarian when he passed through the portal. So uh, he was a barbarian and he got this magic club, which uh, worked very well as a baseball bat against orcs. Um, and uh, uh, many hordes of enemies, he can swing and just knock multiple uh, bad guys on their behinds. Uh, the club was good for breaking open doors and, and opening cavern walls and, and uh, smacking open the earth. It did an awful lot of stuff. So a very, very cool action figure. It looks like he comes with a 12-sided die. So we've got Bobby and Uni with the 12-sided the die. Uh... Bobby, I think, uh, was probably most relatable to younger viewers because he was, all the other kids were friends and they were teenagers and Bobby was the younger brother um, of uh, Sheila, the thief. And so, um, you know, if you're watching it maybe with an older uh, sibling or something and you were the younger one, you might relate more to Bobby. Uh, and uh, obviously Bobby had found Uni at the very beginning of the series and Uni was with them throughout uh, their adventures. Uh, and there was always the, the little bit of sadness knowing that someday they would return to Earth, or hopefully that was their goal, was to return, find the portal that would take them back to Earth, but that Uni would not be able to go with them, you know, and so that was uh, uh, always a little bit sad. But anyway, uh, yeah, we've got um, the final one here of Bobby and Uni. So, uh, yeah, uh, as a quote-unquote unboxing, this is definitely the newest things that I've ever showed on the channel. I hope you enjoyed seeing these. I really enjoy them. I enjoy seeing them, holding them, touching them, seeing the artwork. I can't wait to open them. Uh, I will post some pictures uh, on my Patreon once they're all open and on display. So if you're on my Patreon, uh, you can go check that out. But uh, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with them. Like I said, uh, there was one or two that had some kind of dinged up edges on the card. Again, this one, when, when you're running your finger, but I mean, I mean, 95% would be low, like 98, 99%, uh, you know, but that's always that risk you take when you order stuff. Again, uh, throwing one piece of garbage plastic in a box that's 99% empty air is not going to protect anything, so. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Random Rob. I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed trying out the new uh, camera system. I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed looking at these figures. And most of all, 
I enjoy sharing my collection with you. So thank you guys. Uh, as you know, on YouTube and on my podcast feed, uh, which is Rando Rob on iTunes, or you can listen to them on podcast.robohara.com. The remainder of the week, I will be sharing previous old episodes of Rando Rob that were only available to my uh, Patreon supporters over the past couple of years. And now I'm releasing them to the public to share with everyone. So there are some good ones this week. So if you enjoyed this one, I think there'll be a couple coming this week that you will enjoy. If you want to watch the videos, they're on youtube.com forward slash Rob O'Hara. And there is a um, Rando Rob playlist where you can go through and see all the Rando Rob videos. So thanks for watching. And uh, I'll be talking to you later this week.